Now the next thing that we all need to understand is test data. Let's understand what exactly test data means. So the data which you create in order to test the functionality of the program or the code that you've written down inside Apex uh, is something which is called as test data. And let me tell you why you have to create it because how uh, you'll identify whether the particular trigger is working uh, fine or not or whether this functionality is working fine or not. And when I say test data, it is a kind of data which is transient in nature and that basically means that after the execution of the test, uh, it automatically gets deleted or rolled back from the database. So the whole sole purpose of creating a test data is to execute the test run uh, for a particular functionality. Let's have a look what we have got over here. So. Um, Test data is the transient data that is not committed to the database and is created by each test class to test the Apex code functionality for which it is created. So if there is a test class uh, or if there is a class in which uh, like for which you need data uh, in order to test that uh, class's functionality or that code's functionality, you need to create test data for that. And it may, uh, use of this transient data, test da uh, data makes it easy to test the functionality of other Apex classes and triggers. So yeah, it becomes easier for you to uh, test uh, uh, the functionality. Why? Because you'll be able to create different different type of data and you'll be able to see that how the code reacts or how the functionality is working uh, for different different type of data that you are trying to create into the database or or if, uh, yeah, after creation you want, you're trying to update that from the database. So that's what the case is. This does not change the data already in the system nor is any cleanup required after testing. This is a big, big plus. Uh, after the testing has been finished. So there's no cleanup or something like that that you have to uh, write a code for. It all happens automatically on its own and it's, yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't impact uh, uh, or it doesn't updates or changes any state of any data which is already there into the database. So yeah, that's what the case is. Test classes can be moved to any environment and executed there as they create their own data, hence they are environment or org agnostic. Listen to this word once again environment or org agnostic. Now let me tell you an example uh, based with the help of which you'll be able to understand it in a better way. Let's say you're working on a sandbox of company called as Apollo Tires. Apollo Tires has got a production org and uh, you're working on its sandbox and inside this sandbox you've created a lot of data uh, manually as well and uh, I mean yeah you've created a lot of test data as well which is already there into the database. and. Uh, what you're trying to do is uh, you are uh, creating a functionality into it and you're testing it into sandbox uh, over there, right over there, which has already got some data. But when you'll be moving this Apex class from the sandbox to the production, which does not have any data set, then how will your tests execute and how will uh, like it verify that whether it is working fine in the production or not. Like let's say you have created a calculator class, not a calculator class, but let's say you have created uh, two triggers into, inside uh, the sandbox environment and now you're migrating these two triggers from the sandbox to the production environment. And after uh, migrating it over there, there needs to be the test which should get executed once you deploy it over there. So after deploying all of your code from uh, the sandbox to the production, which has got no data, what are you going to do? Are you going to create some test data manually or with the help of a data loader or something like that over there as well? But that do, do, don't you think that will uh, corrupt the data or the records which are already there if there are any? Uh, or otherwise, like if you'll be creating it manually or with the help of a data loader, there will be a cleanup that you have to do. And while doing the cleanup, if you delete any of the important records or, of the, or any important data from the database, Imagine uh, what your CIO will be doing to you. So <laughs> in order to avoid all of these situations, all what we need to do is we need to create our test data inside our test classes itself. It is highly, highly recommended that uh, if, you, uh, if there is some data which is required in order to test a particular functionality, always and always uh, make test data um, inside that test class itself so that uh, based on that test data, the functionality can, can be tested and verified whether it is working fine or not. And that is why we are saying that this test data is environment or org agnostic. No matter which environment or which org you are, uh, you are uh, I mean, uh, migrating the test class to, 
it will automatically create its own test data and it will test uh, the class according to the test data which we have created with the help of test class. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll not have to worry about, uh, yeah, I mean, what data is already present into the database. Uh, we are independent uh, or, or our testing will become independent or our, or our testing will not be dependent onto the data which is already there into that particular environment or into that particular org. But there comes some situation in which we have to access the data which is present into the database. There, there, there can be many situations like that and uh, sometimes uh, people do not actually want to test uh, the functionality uh, for, uh, like according to the test data because uh, it might not cover all the scenarios. So what a lot of testers and what a, what a lot of developers do is they also include the existing data which is present into the database inside uh, the test or uh, like the they, they perform the test uh, on the data which is already existing or which already exists into the database. So what I'm trying to say is like let's say this is test data. This is the data which is already there into the database. Developers and testers sometimes want the test cases to be executed on both of the data or only onto the data which is present onto the database. So in these situations will not be able to access the records which are present into the database inside a test class. So listen to this once again. Inside a test class, you can't access the data which is already present into the database. So like let's say you've got uh, 50 or like let's say 500 records into account object. Inside the test class, by default, you'll not be able to access any of those 500 account records with the help of an SQL query. So like if you'll just go to a test class and inside a test method, you're writing down a query, select name from account, it will not return you all of those 500 account records which are already there into the database. Why? Because by default, Salesforce doesn't allow you to access the data which is present into the database. Uh, it is not available to you. But if you want it to be available inside the test class or inside a unit test, there's a workaround. And let's see what that is. Okay, so uh, whenever we specify at is test uh, before a method or before a class, uh, we are specifying that it's a test class or it's a test method. But inside the parenthesis, we can pass different different parameters uh, which will mean different different things. So in this particular case, we are passing see all data parameters value as true. And let me tell you what this see all data is equals to true means. So by default in the test class or in the test method, you cannot access the data which is already there into the database. But if in some situations you want to access that data or you want to use that data into the test class or into the test method, you can do that with the help of see all data is equals to true uh, parameter alongside uh, with uh, is test annotation. So that's what it means. Okay, and uh, by default, Salesforce orgs data is not visible. So let, let's just have a look at this. By default, Salesforce orgs data is not visible to the test class. Rather, it has to create its own data. And whenever we create our own data for testing, what do we call it? Test data. However, this behavior can be changed by annotating a test class uh, or test method with at is test see all data is equals to true annotation, which opens up the entire orgs data to the test class. So if you want the entire entire orgs data to be opened up into the test class which you want to use for testing, then you can just annotate uh, the class with it is at is test see all data is equal to true annotation and you'll be able to access the data uh, from the database inside a test class which is by default not available. Okay, if the annotation is defined on the class level, then this annotation is automatically applied to all of its method. This annotation can also be used individually at the method, method level. Okay, so what that means is like, let's say we have got a test class which has got five uh, unit tests or unit test methods. If you want all of these five unit test methods to be able to access the data from the database for the testing, then in that case, you should define at is test parenthesis see all data is equals to true at the class level. So when we annotate the class with at is test, you should write down see all data is equals to true over there itself. But if you want only two of those methods or only one of any uh, one of those methods out of five to be able to access the data which is there into the database, 
then in that case you should annotate that particular method only with c all data is equals to true annotation right let me just take an example for that same so this is a test class and we've got t1 t2 and t3 so uh, yeah i mean these these are the uh, these, these are the different test methods that we, uh, which we have got and uh, we have defined c all data is equals to true at the class level so in that case uh, t1 t2 and t3 will be able to access it and uh, yeah they, they'll be able to access the data which is already there into the database without any uh, annotation uh, like c all data is equals to true separately for each method you do not need that at the uh, method level then if you have defined it onto the class level but let's say that uh, we have defined it uh, onto like we, we only want t1 uh, method to be able to access the data uh, which is present into the database so we'll define c all data is equals to true with the annotation of t1 method and uh, not with t2 and not with t3 and not with uh, yeah tc which is basically the class uh, so if you only want t1 to be able to access the uh, data in, from the database then you should define it with t1 only but if you uh, but if you like a lot of time what the problem which comes up is when people define a class with c all data is equals to true and they want some of its methods to uh, to not uh, be able to access the data from the database that becomes a problem why because as soon as you define uh, like c all data is equals to true at the class level all of its method will automatically uh, have the access to the database irrespective of uh, the parameter that you are passing over there and even if if we'll pass c all data is equals to false at a particular method in or like let's say you've got 100 unit tests and for 100 unit tests you do not want to specify one by one, one by one, that uh, which all, uh, like you, you want to specify, uh, see all data is equals to true for 99 of them, but for a single method, you do not want this to be applicable. In that case, you can't define it onto the class level and make it uh, see all data is equals to false onto that particular single method because uh, it'll not work it like that. You have to have to specify it for each method each 99 like for all of the 99 uh, methods and you have to leave uh, this annotation see all data is equals to true for the one to which you do not want uh, the access to the records or to the data which is there into the database and by doing this you need to make sure that the class is still at is test only not at is test see all data is equals to true you do not need to define it onto the class level until unless you want all of its method uh, methods to have access to the records which are there into the database or access to the data uh, which is there into the database i think i think i i guess i have overstressed it uh, let's not let's let's just not waste our time and uh, go to the developer uh, org and see that how it actually executes in the code